This is huge. I mean, it's not actually that big, but in terms of what it means for the future of Print-A-Block, this little block right here is gigantic. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and if you're new to 3D printing or just want something new to do with 3D printing, you're in the right place. And I hope that you'll stick around, maybe hang out with me on social media, or even check out my Discord where we've got a great community of people who are willing to help you with your 3D printing pro projects. And it's a great place to show off the fun things that you've 3D printed. Now, before we go on, the reason why I've got this strange little side-by-side -side cam thing going on is because my friends at BenQ sent me their IdeaCam S1 Pro, and you've been watching most of this video through it. Now, when I plugged it in, I thought, eh, this can't be that much better than my old Logitech camera, but boy, was I wrong. So on this side with the green screen behind me, that's the BenQ camera. And on the other side is my old Logitech camera. And when I set it up like this, it was clear to me that there was a massive improvement in the video quality. But more than that, this camera was made for conferencing. So if you wanted to show off, say, something that's sitting on your desk, you grab the camera, point it down, and notice how it flips the camera around so that everybody's seeing basically the same thing that you're seeing. Things are lined up so that what you're looking at is what everybody else is looking at. And that's a pretty neat little feature. Also, check this out. It comes with this neat little puck that has all kinds of little buttons. And this works great with their specific app, which is both a web app and something that you can install. However, you know, I've been using this actually in this video because you can hit these buttons and set them as hotkeys in your favorite video recording or editing app. So I'm going to actually use the heck out of this puck outside of their camera app and I actually love it. So big thanks to my friends at BenQ, or should I say thank you to my friends at BenQ for supplying the camera for this video. So for those who don't know, Print-A-Block is a set of construction toys that I made specifically for 3D printing that consists of a block, a connector that goes into them, and then you snap those pieces together. And it's designed so that no matter what 3D printer you print it on, whether it's a good one or a bad one, that all the pieces will still work and work together with ones that you've printed on other 3D printers. And if you want to know more about that, I'll put a video in the cards that will tell you all about it. But Print-A-Block is more than just the individual blocks. It's a construction system that you can use and remix and make your own. And in fact, if you search for Print-A-Block on Thingiverse, one of the first things that you'll find isn't even something that I made. This Print-A-Block Valkyrie mech set was created by Thingiverse user Marlin1974, and it is absolutely beautiful. I love how it allows for superposability and super customizability. It's a great set with a real simple idea. Now this set was remixed from not just my printer blocks, but also from a ball and joint set that Merlin 1947 uh, or 74 made. And this ball and joint set was remixed from another ball and joint. So he took printer blocks and this ball and joint set, remixed them to make a printer block ball and joint, and then used that to make his mech set. And during the printer block beast campaign, I used these ball and joints a lot to add a lot of movement to the sets that I made, but I discovered something about them in the process. Here I have a couple of Marlin's ball and joint sets, and you'll notice that they work pretty good. I love how they have this extension that allows them to go to almost 90 degrees, maybe even a little bit more, but then you can rotate and pivot around. They're super functional. They work great when they work, but sometimes they don't. And this is an example of it not working. You'll notice if I put these together, it doesn't hold whatsoever. And that's because this piece has broken, you'll see. Why did it break? Well, because these pieces print to the build plate like this upwards, and so the layer lines are going through the part that needs to flex, which means since it needs to flex when the ball goes into it, it's as likely to break along those layer lines as it is to flex, and that's not good. So I've had it in my mind for a while that if I could redesign this piece to print 
laying down like this so the layer lines go like this that the flex would work with the layer lines instead of against them but it took me a while to actually try implementing this and I finally did so I started by creating a ball and joint set from scratch but I couldn't make the socket any bigger than 16 millimeters or it would stick out the sides of a normal printer block and I want everything to kind of fit inside of that space neatly so when the top and bottom gets cut off for the sockets it doesn't touch the build plate so I extended it out with kind of fins that reach out from the edge of that cut and make it touch the build plate. Now, I was a little bit concerned about this when I did it, that that would, I don't know, interfere with the movement. But when I tested this out, it actually worked really well. But looking at that ball, it, I don't know, it just looked funny with the fins on it. So I stretched the outer ball up. This had the side effect of making the top and bottom thicker than the sides. But you know, that happens with any hollow sphere when you're 3D printing, so not a big deal, I thought. After testing this out, it worked great, and I had a ball and socket that could go 90 degrees and rotate and had a lot of movement to it. Except I thought, I wonder if I could push it a little bit further. So I took the cuts on the side and the reinforcements for it and moved them down to as far as I thought I could go without falling out of the bottom of the socket. And I was a little bit concerned that this would decrease the surface area that the ball and sockets were interfacing so that it would be loose no matter what you did. But after testing this out, this worked great. Then there was one last little bit where I added a, a bit of a connector so that it would have more contact with the build plate and it would print as one whole piece as it started its print and would have a less, less likely chance of falling off the build plate with small contact area. And there we go. We got a ball and socket joint that does an acute bend in it that can go further than 90 degrees but still has good contact good hold it holds well and I've been able to test it a lot that you can insert and remove them and they just work over and over again now there is still one small weak point in this and that is the neck of the ball it still prints sideways and there's I, I can't think of any way to reinforce this neck that won't interfere with the movement so I'm gonna have to go with it if you just print these with three shells or more in my experience they end up being a pretty good connection and like I said that's the only weak spot if you have to reprint a couple of balls the sockets will survive getting the balls taken out of them and put back into them oh and one more thing about these ball and socket joints is I designed them to be exactly the same size as a one by two printer block when they're fully extended now obviously the one by twos don't bend and flex so you know that's not going to necessarily matter but to me it's nice to have all the printer blocks fit within the same profile and if you get the ones that have the additional printer blocks on the side they are two and a half blocks and if you get the one that has more uh, the connectors on the other side so there's connectors on both sides it is exactly the same as three printer blocks so it all fits within the printer block standard i don't know that's just a satisfying thing for me i guess but despite the fact that they are slightly different dimensions than the original ones they are drop-in replacements for any of the old ball and socket joints they work in all the places including this shoulder joint of the lion or fox mech in the printer block beasts I made this kind of sheath that goes over the outside of it and the new ball and sockets just fit right in there with no problem I did not do that on purpose but I'm really happy that it worked out that well yeah this works great now I've already printed these on a variety of 3d printers the bamboo labs the adventurer 3 and even my toy box 3d printer and they all come together and work perfectly and in fact I could take them and connect them with each other and they still work but I've noticed that sometimes they're a little bit tighter or a little bit looser depending on the interactions between them and some 3d printers just seem to print them a little bit tighter and a little bit looser so there's a possibility that this opens up that I've never had before and that is for negative tolerances this ball joint is actually a millimeter bigger 
than the other ball joints in the design, which means that it fits together a lot tighter and it's a little bit harder to move and it holds its position a lot better. This is advanced printer block ball and sockets, but it enables the making of things that you could practically use this for stop motion. It's that rugged. But this creates a bit of a problem for me. I have this strange compulsive desire to want to go back to all of the old printer block mechs and B sets and re-up them, re redo them, and this time use the ball and joint sets as well as to put pilots inside of them and also to take all the plain blocks and turn them into greebled blocks. And I could spend the rest of my days revising the old sets instead of making new ones. And so instead of that, I've decided to kind of draw a line in the sand. I have taken all of those old sets and put them together in the ultimate Kickstarter bundle pack, which basically represents all of the printer blocks that I have made up to this point in one big collection. And moving forward, I am going to do some new things. Well, this is a remake of the Valkyrie set that I showed you earlier, although I've made a couple of changes. First of all, there's the new ball and socket joints. And secondly, I've changed the head so that there's a pilot hiding inside of it. There's going to be printer block pilots all over printer blocks going forward. But this has been customized by my son. I just said, hey, do what you want. And he decided to put wheels all over it so it's a wheelie mech but more than just this mech can you imagine what if this could be extended with parts and and mechanisms that could make hundreds of different mechs uh, sure we'd probably make five or six variations and then you could remix them for days we could have a skeleton with a longer arm we could have a skeleton with shorter legs we could have a skeleton with fancy shoulder pads or whatever if there is a favorite mech that you want to make something uh, legally distinct but similar to go ahead and sound off in the comments because i think this is going to be my next major printer block project is making mech suits and different helmets and different looks and different configurations and different shapes and different weapons i i'm i am absolutely blown away by the possibilities that this provides and the just massive sources of inspiration that I'm going to be able to tap to be able to just, I could do this for a really long time and I think I'm going to have a good time with it. So like I said at the beginning, this little block is huge for the future of printer block and I hope that you'll check them out. I also hope that you'll check out the ultimate printer block Kickstarter bundle. It should be on sale right now as you're watching this video, but that's all that I have for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I want to remind you that you're a child of God, so you're special, so take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.